Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Curtis Hawks over here at Insurance Agency Marketing Services, and I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us. We've got uh, an incredibly exciting as well as innovative uh, new product to talk about with all of you, and so we've got a, a lot of a lot of good content to go through today. Uh, did want to take a couple of minutes here at the beginning of the presentation to talk about some of the additional ways that IMS is here to add value to your practice. Uh, first up, you can see we've got our new producer builders up on the screen. This is a great way for us to partner with you in your first six months of working with us. As you can see, we've got a number of point totals and a number of uh, items that you can access, and you get automatically enrolled into our new producer builder program when you first get appointed with IMS. And so, um, if you've got questions on that, would like to know where where you stand, reach out and talk to a sales director over here. That number is 800. 255-5055. In addition to that, we've got a referred producer program. Uh, if you know of an agent that you think might be a fit for IMS, or maybe they're just not necessarily happy with the current relationship, send them our way. Not only will you get a $50 bonus when they get contracted, but then on an ongoing basis, you can accrue uh, additional revenue based off of their production. You don't have to do anything. We'll take care of all the service. And so it's a great way to generate that additional revenue flow coming in the door. In addition to that, we've got our marketing reimbursement program. You can see that for every 100,000 of qualifying indexed annuity premium, you get $100. And then for every 100,000 of single premium life business, you get an additional $200 and also $200 for 10,000 of, of live target. And that's a, a great way for us to help partner in your business and help, uh, help you either reduce the cost of your marketing or increase the volume of it. In addition to that, we've got back office support. And I, you know, I think when you think of IMS, uh, we, you know, we were founded 38 years ago, and that has been a cornerstone of who we are. Uh, I think we do it better than most, and we, we built out a, a significant number of resources to help support your business, as well as the very talented team that are over here. And so I would encourage you, if you haven't taken advantage of that, I certainly would encourage you to do so. And you can reach out and talk to a sales director over here. That number is 800. 255-5055. Uh, to that end, we've got the IMS portal. A ton of resources on here, uh, from life quoting software to annuity quoting software, annuity rates, life insurance underwriting, uh, e-applications, product information. We've also got our sales resource library, which literally has hundreds of point of sale pieces that you can instantly download on a range of topics, whether it's annuity or life insurance basics all the way to premium finance and uh, specimen trust documents and everything in between. So great resource. Uh, you do need to be contracted with us in order to access that. And if you've got questions on that, certainly feel free to uh, reach out and talk to a sales director over here. As I mentioned, uh, we do uh, have EAP capability on the IMS portal. You can see we integrate with Firelight, iPipeline, as well as Sunfire. And to take that a step further, here's a great breakdown on Firelight. Uh, you'll see they cover the majority of the annuity carriers and a handful of life insurance. And then iPipeline will be for the majority of your life insurance companies. And then Sunfire uh, is a great platform for Medicare. We've also got our creative department. And I, you know, I would tell you now more than ever, your digital brand is critically important. And what we've seen over the last few years is consumers will definitely look you up. They will definitely do research on who they're working with. And so if you feel like maybe your, your brand isn't quite as strong as it could be, or maybe you're just not quite happy with your current marketing, or you're just, you are happy with your marketing, but you're always looking for new areas of opportunity, utilize our, our marketing team. They do an amazing job. We also have a complimentary marketing analysis that we'll do with you. Uh, this is where we will uh, sit down, do a deep dive on your uh, marketing and what your goals are and what the business looks like, and then put together a customized marketing plan for you. So definitely, if you have interest in that, reach out and talk to a sales director. The number is 800-255-5055. In addition to that, we've got IMS Wealth Management, and I'll go ahead and I'll launch the first of three polls today, but we've certainly seen... Uh, growing opportunity 
in the AUM space. And so we, we did set up Einsdorf management several years ago and have seen significant growth. And so if you are currently 65 licensed and maybe not quite happy with your current relationship, or maybe it's uh, something that you've been thinking about adding into what you do, check yes. And, and we'll have uh, Duncan, uh, one of the team members from I'm as well to reach out to you and they can chat with you a little bit about the resources that they have available there. So I'll go ahead and uh, get this closed down here. Next up are our life and annuity academies. And I'll go ahead and launch our second poll today. But these really are uh, an amazing opportunity. Uh, you spend uh, a ton of time working in the business when you're out in the field. These are a great opportunities to spend some time working on your business, to hear from top producers, to see the most current annuity and life insurance trends, to see the most current marketing trends, and to take tangible things back that you can immediately implement into your practice. And so I would tell you, if you have interest in this, definitely check yes. Uh, we do several of these trainings throughout the course of the year, but they do fill up fast. And so um, we are going to be announcing our upcoming dates for the year here. Uh, pretty soon. And so definitely check yes if you uh, have interest in attending one of those. So I'll go ahead and keep moving here. We also have um, Wentworth by the Sea uh, in New Hampshire. This is going to be an amazing uh, incentive trip. Athene Premium qualifies for this. You can see there are 3 million of Athene Premium will get you to the trip. Qualification runs through June 30th of this year. And then trip dates are August 25th through the 28th. Uh, it's going to be an amazing event. The other thing I would mention to you as well is we do have qualification going for an additional IMS incentive trip. We'll be making an announcement here uh, shortly on the uh, uh, venue and uh, dates on that. But if you've got questions about where you stand on points, uh, reach out, talk to a sales director over here. That number is 800-255-5055. Lastly, uh, I would encourage you to like and follow us on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Great uh, way to see the most current rates on annuities, life insurance, marketing campaigns, training events, all those types of things. So definitely take advantage of that. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to get this uh, switched over. So with me today is uh, Phil Graham with Homesteaders Life. And we're really excited about this partnership. As, as many of you know, uh, we will uh, every year uh, look at uh, carrier relationships, et cetera, and, and look at different options that we can bring to the table that will um, be a big benefit to our advisors. And, and Homesteaders is definitely one of those. And so uh, this carrier and product, I think, fits uh, a lot of different applications. And I think there's definitely some very uh, interesting things that are some interesting ways that you can position this with your clients. And so with that, Bill, I appreciate you taking some time with us today. And I, I know the group's interested in hearing more. Thank you, Curtis. And I just want to make sure that you can see just my face and Mohawk on there. I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> okay. And, and did it change right there? It did. Yeah. To opportunity. Perfect. I was I was so distracted by all the great incentives and things that you do at IMS like I forgot to tee up my screen. I was just sitting there staring at the well I want to go to New Hampshire and I want to go to a the annuity training and and I want marketing dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. Thank you for for having me today. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know me, my name's Phil Graham. Um, founder and creator of the Beneficiary Liquidity Plan. And for the last five years, we've been focused on this singular problem. But prior to starting the Beneficiary Liquidity Plan, you know, I spent the first 20 years of my career in, primarily in annuity distribution, protected over $22 billion of annuity premium over that time, um, had all my securities licenses, all that fun stuff. And I sold out of those businesses and I stumbled across this niche and I kind of want to start the story. If you can just imagine with me for a second, imagine you're a recovering annuity addict. I kind of joke. That's what I was. You know, I, I loved annuities. 
you're recovering a nudie addict and you, and you stumble across a statistic. And that statistic says that somewhere between 70 and $80 trillion are going to be transferring hands in the next 25 years. Well, being the recovering annuity addict, I loved money in motion. That's how I got paid. So I got really excited, as I'm sure you do, when you see that statistic about the great wealth transfer. Well, my excitement quickly turned to fear when the next statistic I read from wealthmanagement.com was that 66% of beneficiaries fire their parents' advisor immediately upon inheriting wealth. 66%. And I went, uh oh, if 66% of the annuities, life insurance, assets under management, 66% of the money you manage starts walking out the door, you can't refill that proverbial bucket fast enough. So I wanted to know why. And that started my journey. Well, the easy reason why is. We've surveyed thousands of financial advisors. Most agree, almost all agree, they do not have a consistent method of building a relationship with the beneficiaries. Now, I wanted to know, dig a little bit deeper, could be geographic, could be demographic, or could be you're just too busy. But regardless of the reason, you probably would agree that you don't have a consistent process for ensuring you have a relationship with the beneficiary. I went, okay, that's great, but man, it's gotta be more than just the relationship. These kids or beneficiaries are getting a half million, a million, five million, 10 million, whatever the number is, they're getting this money from you. Why would they fire you? Well, we dug a little bit deeper and we think in combination with not having a relationship, it's the death claims process. So let's, let's talk about this for a minute. What happens when a client dies? The beneficiary calls your office and almost every advisor says the same thing. You know, Mr. and Ms. Beneficiary, I'm so sorry for your loss. We loved your mother. She was a great client for a long time. Please let us know if there's anything we can do for you. And almost immediately, the beneficiaries say, either because they want it, need it, or a combination of both, they go, Mr. and Ms. Advisor, we need money. Now, can any financial advisor get the beneficiary's money immediately after their client passes away? No. So think about that. You compound the fact that you don't have a relationship with the beneficiaries. They call you, the insurance agent or financial advisor, who they think controls the money. And on one of the worst days of their life, you can't get them any money. So we're going to talk about how we help you build the hero bridge, how we pay you to build that bridge, and what our solution is. So we already talked about we need a death certificate, right? Now, I have all the statistics and all the states, but I love asking people, how long they think it takes to get a copy of the death certificate because your perception is my reality regardless of what statistics I have. But you got to get the death certificate. It's taken four to six weeks depending on the state. You got to do the claim paperwork. A lot of companies are taking 20 days minimum to process a claim. For most families, it's at least 30, if not 45, 60, 90 days or longer before they're getting any money. Now, before COVID, you could go down to the courthouse, but because of COVID, everything went digital. You would think the digital is faster. It doesn't always work that way. So we just pulled this from the Texas Public Health and Human Services website. Their online processing time is 20 to 25 business days. That's a month. Assuming everything gets signed off on, known cause of death, and everything goes according to plan, and then some carriers are taking another 20 plus days on top of that. So you're looking at two months minimum before we can get the family any money. Now, here's an extreme example. I love Prince. Prince died April 21st, 2016. 
and yes, this is a trick question, and I realize that you can't answer on the webinar, but do you know who paid for Prince's funeral? It was not his family. I'm sure you could have guessed that. Was not his agent. Was not the state of Minnesota. It was the family friend, actor, and comedian, George Lopez, gave Prince's family $20,000 to bury him. Why? Because they couldn't get to any money. Now, listen, this, take this back to reality. I believe this happens every day in America, but instead of it being Prince and George Lopez, it's one of your beneficiaries, excuse me, one of your clients passes away. One of the siblings is deemed more successful than the others. They get stuck paying the bills. They never get reimbursed, and now Thanksgiving is awkward. What's really interesting about having done this exclusively for five years, a lot of you as successful agents and financial advisors may be that successful person in your family, and you may have gotten stuck paying some bills yourself. A lot of my one-on-one -on -one conversations, the advisor's like, man, I've paid for three funerals, Phil. My in-laws, my own parents, I never got reimbursed. But nobody knew that there was a solution. But before we get into the solution, let's talk about how much it costs to die. Because a lot of people don't understand. And what's interesting is the funeral ends up being the cheap part. So we use empathy.com. Empathy.com does a cost of dying report every year. And you're going to see me quote their 2022, 2023, and 2024 cost of dying report. Because we use them as a uninterested third party for their statistics on what happens to families when a loved one dies. On my YouTube channel, I did an interview with an estate planning attorney, and I asked Craig, the attorney, Craig, who should somebody make their executor of their estate? Craig smirked, kind of laughed a little bit, and he said, Phil, whichever beneficiary they like the least, because being an executor is terrible. And Empathy.com last year said, on average, it's taking families 12 and a half months, 12 and a half months to resolve all the financial matters. And they spend over 12 hours a week on these tasks. This is not an easy job. But how much does it cost? Well, last year, the average funeral cost was $7,800, almost $8,000. And there was another $9,000 in additional expenses like attorney fees, legal bills, other expenses that need to be paid. And for those of you that are familiar with being an executor, the executor is responsible for all the debt and everything else that that deceased person has. And what people don't realize is that when you die, your family inherits your debt, except for certain government student loans. That is about it. Now, this is going to blow your mind. How did families pay that $17,000? Well, almost 80% used money from their savings or their own checking, and out of that, over 50% went into debt. Think about this. Over half of families went into debt to cover the expenses when a loved one passes away, and over 80% had to use their own money. One of the reasons we're so passionate about this is we know that that's not what mom or dad would have wanted. They just didn't know that there wasn't going to be any money available. Now, only one in seven families had immediate access to money to cover the cost. And the majority of this comes from the 10% of families that prepay and pre-plan for their funerals. So only 10% of families prepay for their funerals. And I'm not surprised because who wants to go to the funeral home and pick out their casket? Not me. Who wants to make sure the expenses are not a burden to their family? Sign me up. I'm in on that one. Now, you guys probably already have a million things going through your head. Again, I've been doing this for five years. We've had tens of thousands of advisor conversations. 
So I already know what people come back with, both from a client standpoint and from an agent advisor standpoint. So people, this, this is what people tell me how they're going to fix the problem. Well, the first thing, because this is the world I've lived in for so long, people go, well, Phil, we got life insurance and annuities. My client's got $5 million of death benefit. They have, a, they have a death benefit rider on that annuity they bought. Well, you guys already know I love life insurance and I absolutely love annuities. But unfortunately, they require a death certificate and a claims process and are not immediately available for those families to use. So they're a great tool. They just don't create immediate liquidity. Well, Phil, we went down to our estate planning attorney or my financial advisor, you know, helped me do a living trust as part of our estate plan. And Johnny, my beneficiary, is the successor trustee. I think a living trust, revocable trust, is a great wealth transfer tool, estate planning tool. It's a great way to make sure your assets pass the way that you want them to. But if Johnny's your successor trustee, what piece of paper does Johnny need? to take to the attorney to start the process of becoming the successor trustee to access the money. You guessed it, a death certificate. It's not immediately available. Well, Phil, we went down to the bank and, you know, our investment advisor with, you know, Imes Wealth Management set up all of our accounts with POD or TOD. Payable on death or transfer on death. I highly recommend that all of your non-beneficiary accounts be titled POD or TOD because that avoids probate. But what piece of paper does your beneficiary need to take to that financial institution to start the process to transfer that money on death? A death certificate. Seen a trend here, right? This one really gets me worked up. Final expense insurance. Unfortunately, it requires a death certificate and will only be there to reimburse somebody, but is not immediately available to cover the cost when your loved one passes away. And last, but certainly not least, financial power of attorney. This one confuses a lot of people because they don't realize that the power of attorney dies when you die. Financial power of attorney does not work after death. Great way to have someone help pay your bills, do some other financial decisions while you're alive, but it does not work after death. But here's the good news. I know this is the part everybody's been waiting for. Clients love the fact with this solution that they don't have to buy any more inheritance. We're going to use money the family's already earmarked for the inheritance. The vehicle we use is a single premium, guaranteed issue, fixed, whole life insurance contract issued by a 119-year-old A-rated mutual insurance company. Everybody loves tax-deferred and tax-free. But here's the secret sauce. The death benefit, the full tax-free death benefit is paid out in 24 to 48 hours, wait for it, without a death certificate. And I'm going to have another slide that goes through the claims process, but that's our secret sauce. No health qualifications, name, address, social security number, date of birth, who's your beneficiaries. The only kick out is you can't be 91. When you when you put a plan in place, the maximum without approval is a hundred thousand, and we have a simple e application, and we issue policies daily. So let's kind of summarize here. We always tell clients like Mr. Miss Jones, you're already leaving money to your beneficiaries, right? And they're going, "Yep, Phil, I hope so. Great." We're not going to give your beneficiaries any more inheritance, and we're not going to give them any less inheritance. What my job is, is to help you determine 
What's the minimum? And you'll see in our training some of the keywords, minimum and inheritance are two of our keywords. What's the minimum we think your family's going to need for the first 24 to 48 hours after your passing? By giving them access, this will relieve the immediate financial burden. Giving them access to money they were eventually going to inherit anyways. And by eliminating the death certificate requirement, they're getting the money 30, 60, 90 days faster. And then we've trademarked this truly is the final piece to the financial plan. Now, you heard me talk a little bit earlier about Financial advisors don't have relationships with the beneficiaries. Well, one of the uses, one of the main reasons we built this solution was so we could help you connect to the inheriting generation. So at issue, we want you to be introduced to the beneficiaries. Johnny, Sally, this is 25 grand. We, we worked with mom and dad. We put this together for you. This is going to be the only money immediately available when something happens to mom or dad, so you need to call us first. Oh, and by the way, because mom and dad are such great clients, if there's ever anything we can be of service, even if it's as simple as answer a 401k allocation question at your work, please don't hesitate to call. We'd love to be of service to you. You can add them to your email or other newsletter communication. At Homesteaders Life, we created a beneficiary statement where we can send with the client's approval an annual reminder to the beneficiaries that this policy is in place and with your contact information if they need to file a claim or if they have any additional questions or need any other services. We're helping facilitate that relationship on your behalf. And then the grand finale, when the client passes away, you're now the hero showing up with money when nobody else can dramatically increasing the probability of maintaining those assets because you now have a relationship. You're now getting them access to money immediately, giving you time to settle the rest of the claims properly and make sure they're happy and satisfied. We've seen this work and we paid you to build the bridge. So let's talk about the claims and then we'll get into compensation and a few other things. You're probably thinking, and if well, Phil, if you if you don't need a death certificate, how do you know I died? That's a fair question, right? If you don't need a death certificate, how do you know I died? Well, in this country, whether you're being buried or cremated, you end up in front of a licensed funeral director. We have a patent pending on our death claims process, but to oversimplify it, the funeral director tells us that you're dead. Yep, I'm looking at Phil, he's dead. And we release the funds immediately. Now, one of the reasons we built this product with Homesteaders Life is last year, Homesteaders Life, the A-rated mutual insurance company, last year, 2023, paid over 68,000 different claims without a death certificate utilizing this process. But do you remember me saying that less than 10% of the population prepays and pre-plans for their funeral? Well, Homesteaders is one of the largest carriers in that space. We built this product for financial advisors and insurance agents for their existing clients to target the 90% of people that are never going to go to the funeral home. Our policies are five times as big and our issue ages are 15 years younger because people don't want to go to the funeral home. It doesn't mean going to the funeral home is bad. We just know that families need money. And even clients that are prepaid for their funeral are buying beneficiary liquidity plans because their families are going to need access to more money than just the funeral. They're going to need, on average, another $10,000. But the funeral director tells us you died. We cover the cost of the funeral for the family and the excess money. In this example, $10,000 is ACH'd immediately to the named beneficiaries. It's super fast, super simple. The funeral director is smiling ear to ear because they didn't have to deal with beneficiaries that didn't have any money. And I got a whole YouTube series where I interviewed a funeral director on the problem in today's market where families can't afford to pay. And guess what? Payments due when services are rendered.
All right, but what does this mean for you? Now, I'm sure before I show you the commissions, you can do the math on what it means to you financially if a client with a half million dollars dies and the beneficiaries keep that half million dollars with you. What you make with me pales into com in comparison to what you're going to make when these clients pass away. But we're going to pay you handsomely in the meantime. Our average premium is somewhere between twenty and 25000 and it's been dead on to that for the last five years. We track our numbers every month. You know, if you have a client that's 75 years old, 70 years old, and you write one $25,000 application per week, that's $130,000 of additional revenue. Our average conversations are 15 to 20 minutes long. So you're making over, well over $100 a minute from your existing clients that were already going to come into your office anyways. So this is a great way to monetize your annual reviews, your client appointments. And I'm going to get into our five question survey that makes it simple. But you want your clients to have this. We're going to pay you to put it in place with our simple e app and then make you the hero. And that's when the big payday happens, is when your clients pass away. So, how do we do this? Well, we have a two step process. We have a full digital playbook with all of our training videos, all of our content, all of our scripts. Like I said, we've done this exclusively for five years. We have perfected everything we do. Everything we do is for a very specific reason by design. And so we have a, the first two weeks you come on board, we want you to do a short list sprint. We're gonna give you our five question survey that you're gonna get to five, 10 clients. You're gonna, we'll do training with you. You can watch our videos, you can follow our script you will write business that first two weeks if you follow our process. After that, it's pretty simple. All we do is ask you to do annual reviews with your clients and incorporate this into your annual review process. What's interesting is a lot of our agents and advisors find other annuity and insurance dollars when they meet with their clients, but the reason they're meeting with them is because there's a monetization opportunity. So here's our shortlist sprint. We give you the survey. It's five questions. The five questions get the client to admit they don't want to be a burden to their family. Because guess what? We already know most people don't want to be a burden. We get them to admit that they want their family to access money. And then they tell us how much of the money they'd want them to access. And then we simply ask them how. And then we go right into the presentation. So if you do this for five to 10 clients, you can do it over the phone, you can do a Zoom, you can do it in person. You will make sales. And once you're off and running, that's where we kind of kick it in to the annual process. But we build out the survey for you. We have all the collateral. We have everything you need. We have videos. We got stuff with Tom Hegna. We got all the things that you would need. But the first steps are you need to get with IMES and get set up. They're one of the only organizations in the country that have access to homesteaders. And that's partly due to, to Curtis Hawks, and that's partly due to Chris Conroy and our relationship with those gentlemen. They're one of the only organizations that have access. You got to get licensed. It's all through Cheryl C. It's super easy. You register for the playbook, watch all the training videos. We get you your five question survey that will custom brand to you. Get those answers back from your clients. You can do strategy calls with our team. We got everything scripted out. You write the e-apps. We add it to the annual reviews. And then we repeat. It's that simple. So, Curtis, if there's any questions, you know, I'm more than happy to, to answer those. Well, obviously, we can do them offline as well. But um, thank everybody for, for your time today. Well, yeah. And, and Phil, I appreciate you taking the time with us today. So, if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box. Uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to launch. Um, our final poll of the day, which is if you uh, have questions about uh, this product, this opportunity, and would like to get some more information, rate sheets, et cetera, uh, then just check yes and we'll get that over to you. Um, you know, Phil, I, I think one interesting thing that you talk about is a, a point that I think a lot of 
consumers don't think about. And it's something they only go through a couple of times in their lifetime, which is that bottleneck after the death of that individual. And while there's planning and those types of things that have been done, you still go back to that death certificate is key to get liquidity to pay for the funeral. And, you know, the other thing about that is, I mean, it can take months, as you mentioned, to settle an estate. And so if there's mortgage payments, all those types of things that are still due, where does the money come from? And so I, I really feel like this is a, an, a very innovative product that really fits a, a need that every consumer is going to go through. And, um, and, and here's it, on that note, Curtis, here's like how I put everybody's mind kind of at ease on this. I can't sit here in front of you, in front of the, the group or in front of anybody and tell you that your your clients' families can't figure this out at death without a beneficiary liquidity plan. Because for generations, you didn't have a beneficiary liquidity plan. And guess what? We're all still here, right? Like, you don't need this to figure it out. But my definition of figuring it out causes stress, arguments, disagreements amongst loved ones. And like empathy.com said, short-term or long-term financial hardship. And the reason I'm so passionate about this is I, I realize that the majority of the time, mom or dad was leaving money to the family. They thought this was taken care of, but they just didn't know. If they knew they could have fixed this problem without buying more inheritance or making premium payments to leave more money, just a matter of reallocating assets, if they would have known all they had to do was shift 10% from the annuity over to the BLP and the problem was solved, why wouldn't they do that? If it didn't cost anything, why wouldn't you fix the problem just to make sure it was fixed? And that's the story and the point we try to get across is not, well, I could probably do this or I think my kids might be able to do this. Like, Why would you play the what if game or the hope and pray game when we can fix the problem and it doesn't cost you anything to fix it? That's really my story to clients. And some don't get it. That's fine. They're already your clients. You didn't spend any money on any leads or any marketing. They're already your clients. And so kind of that's my, I think my end story to that, Curtis, is I know we could play the what if game on, well, they might be able to get money this way or that way. So they might not be able to. Let's just fix the problem. It doesn't cost anything. And that's kind of our messaging to clients. And if they get it, it's super easy. And if somebody doesn't, that's okay too. We're okay with that. Yep. Well, I'll close out our last poll. We did get a question, and I, I, I think I know the answer to this, but we had a question that came up on group life insurance. Do you still have the same issue with the death certificate? Which I would think. Uh, Every carrier kind of right a, now that I'm aware of requires a death certificate, whether it's group or anything. I mean, it, that is part of their their process. I mean, yeah. I guess I can't say that with 100% certainty. We'd need to check with that carrier, but traditionally it is. And I'll give you a perfect example. At Homesteaders that I, I'm a W-2 employee of, we have a group life insurance plan. We offered the beneficial liquidity plan to all of our employees in an employer-sponsored program. We wouldn't do that if our group life plan didn't require a death certificate. Yeah. Yeah, I think even if it's group, I mean, you're still using a life insurance company and you still have to have to provide that. So, um, good in, question. In any case, yeah, yeah. In, in any case, I, I think um, you know I got the poll shut down here, but I, again, I, I think as everybody can see, a lot of opportunity here. And I, I think when you walk through this with a client, I, I really feel like there's an aha moment that gets created there. So we'll. We'll definitely make sure to have the sales directors reach out. I know we've got a lot of you that are interested in getting contracted and add this to portfolio. So uh, for those of you listening, appreciate you taking some time with us today. And then, Phil, appreciate you taking a deep dive and going through all this with us. Thank you, Curtis. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on with us.